synthetic division. And this synthetic division is going to be a little bit different because I have it missing a few pieces. Now on the board I put some blue lines. I wanted that to kind of be like your notebook paper because I want to make sure I explain all of how synthetic works so that we don't just get lost in the shortcuts and we make sure we actually get it down. In my class I have a saying that shortcuts in math are like shortcuts in horror movies. The more shortcuts we take, it's like the teenage girls in a horror movie. They're going to end up not in a good place normally. So make sure you're writing everything down until you get really, really good at it. If you always struggle with math, we always need to write stuff down because that's probably what we weren't doing before and it wasn't working for us. So try something different. So with synthetic, I want you to start going down one line and put a horizontal line. So my blue is what's already on my notebook paper. My black is the stuff that I'm writing in. Then I want you to go down two lines. So have one blue line in the middle and do another horizontal line. This setup is what most people forget when they get to the test. They forget how to set it up and then you can't really do synthetic division if you don't know how to set it up. So the setting up, the setting up and the finishing it out are the two hardest parts of synthetic division to remember. Because in the middle, you're just adding and multiplying. But the very beginning and the very end. So I need y'all to humor me. Write out everything I write out. It's just going to save y'all some chaos on the test. And then because it's so easy, people just don't get the practice. Make sure you're doing your homework. Make sure you're getting practice. Make sure if it's going easily, but you're still just like, I'm still struggling with everything. Get some extra problems offline or off your, out of your textbook or something like that. Uh, make sure if you do all your homework in one day, the next day go back and do an extra synthetic division to make sure you can remember it after a day because your test isn't going to be the same day that your homework's due. So you've got to make sure you can remember it after, after some time. Then I want you to go over about three, two or three, four inches and draw a vertical line that goes through the line above it, the two lines in the middle, and two lines below it. So this took me two, three, four, five, five lines on my paper to do. Now once you get really good at it, once you've done about, synthetic goes very fast. So the number that you have to do to get you really good at it is very high. It's kind of like with square roots and such. They go very fast, you've got to do a lot of them. You're probably looking at 20 to 30 of synthetics before you get really good at it. If you're doing long division, you only need like five or six. Synthetics, you need like 20 to 30 because long division is such a hard process and it's such a long process. We don't have to do as many of them. We still need to do, I mean, five or six is a lot of long divisions. Typically, some people are more, some are less. But synthetics, you're looking at about 20, 20 to 30. Because it goes so fast, it's so easy to just blow over it and you get to the test and you're like, all I can remember was it was fast, it was easy, it involved addition and multiplication, I can't remember how to set it up. I don't even know how to start. And then it gets left completely blank. That are people try to multiply and FOIL instead of dividing. So it doesn't work at night. For this setup, in here, this first one, this first little slot, you are going to put the first polynomials coefficients. What we're going to do is we're going to take all the variables out. So no variables at all, only the coefficients. Now if we were to go and say, okay, coefficient is number one, coefficient is number one, coefficient is negative one. I have no idea how to tell what those are. Because the way you're going to read synthetic division is you're going to start from the end, and that should be the constant. Then you go over left one, that should be your x, left another one is your x squared, left another one is your x cubed, so on and so forth. Here, we didn't have a constant, right? We just have x to the fifth, x cubed, and x squared. I don't have an x. I don't have a constant. I don't even have an x to the fourth. I'm missing pieces. So this is not going to work if you're missing pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. X to the fifth is your highest one. We're missing an X to the fourth. So I'm going to add zero X to the fourths. 
I don't want to change the problem. I just need a placeholder. I need something to hold its place to say there are no x to the force. That way I don't, when I'm just putting coefficients in, I don't accidentally put something in there. x to the cubed I have, x squared I have, I do not have any x's, so I need zero x's, and I need a constant. You have to go all the way to the constants. Okay? So now if I read my exponents, I have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I need every one of them. Okay? So when you do your coefficients, we have 1, leave a space, 0, leave a space, 1, leave a space, negative 1, 0, and 0. That way we can tell, well, this is my constant, x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth. I can tell what they all are without actually needing to have the variables written down. Okay? Over here, you want to know what's being divided. This is the second polynomial solved for x. So we have x minus 2. We're going to go ahead and set that equal to 0. And I'm going to add 2. I want to go ahead and solve for x. I want x equals positive 2. That's what I want. All right, so that's my setup. All of that has been set up. So then we're going to start the actual math. So hardest part right here, setup. Second hardest part is the very end. The math people actually tend to like. But because they like the math, they don't put the practice in to make sure they understand how the setup is. We don't tend to like to write this out. We don't tend to like to write out where everything came from. We don't like to write out the solving process. Remember, if you've always struggled with math and you continue to study in the exact same way that you've always studied, you're going to continue to get the same grades you've always gotten. So if you've always struggled and you've always not wanted to write extra stuff out, maybe now's the time to change that. And let's see if it helps our grades. Let's see if it helps our hatred of math. My goal is not to make people love math, because I'm not delusional and I still don't love math. My goal is to make people just not absolutely hate it and just kind of sort of hate it. Make it a little bit better. Okay, so for these, what's going to happen? Your very first one, always and forever, will fall to the very bottom. You could even include that as part of a setup. Because it will always happen. It will always fall. Just the first one. That's going to be your starting point. So again, you always struggle with math. Put that always fall. That way, if you always write it down, you're going to get to the test and you're not going to have any hesitation because you've got that muscle memory in your hand that says, oh yeah, I always, always fall here. So, oh, it must always fall. Okay. Then, where it gets kind of weird, you're going to multiply. So we're going to multiply bottom by outside. So 1 times 2. And I'm going to write my steps here so I can always see where my stuff comes from. 1 times 2 becomes 2. If all I put is just the answers here, synthetic division looks crazy. If you put this here, then you're like, oh, that's where that two came from. Okay. Especially if you go and you're color coding and you circle them in blue. It makes it a little easier for you to see where things come from. Then you're going to add top plus middle. So I'm going to add zero plus two. Zero plus two is two. And again, I write my arithmetic out. That way I can always tell where things came from. Then repeat. Multiply 2 times 2. That's 4. Add 1 plus 4. 5. Multiply 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 2 is 10. Negative 1 plus 10 is 9. 9 times
times 2, 18, 0 plus 18, 18 times 2, and 0 plus 36. Okay. I'm at the end, so I don't have anywhere to go. I'm at my last column. Now I have to read my answer. So let me recap real quick before I get to the end what we did. First step. First, always falls. First one will always fall straight down. Then you multiply the bottom by the outside. Then you add the top and the middle. Then you multiply. You add. You multiply. You add. On and on and on until you get to the end of it. So that's your process. Now I'm going to erase this so I can see this right below this bottom line. Now we have to read our answer. The last thing it tells us, I'm going to start from the very end and work my way front. The last thing it tells us is the remainder. Remainder starts with an R, so we call it R of X. R of X equals, how about I put zero? I'm going crazy, I don't know. It happens all the time. Now she me in a lecture class. I make so many stupid mistakes. Then I remind the students, if I can make stupid mistakes, so can y'all, right? So never overestimate yourself. I can screw up addition with the best of them. Okay? I can also screw the algebra up with the best of them, too. So can y'all. We've got to get the practice. Don't practice till you get it perfect. Practice till you don't till you can't screw it up. Till it's like second nature to you. For these. That's going to be your answer. We call it a quotient when we divide. Quotient is your answer. So we're going to call this Q of X because quotient starts with a Q. And just like we did up here, just like we did up here when we got rid of the exponent, rid of the variables, the last one was always our constant. Then we had the X, the X squared, the X cubed, the X to the fourth, the X to the fifth. We're going to come down here. This is our constant. The next one's our X followed by our x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. It should lose, a, lose an exponent. So q of x will equal 1x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 9x plus 18. I guess it doesn't go all the way to 36. Okay. And those are your two answers. Uh, if you're told to factor and not just do synthetic division, you've got to repeat with the Q of X and keep going. If that were to go to zero. Okay. 